Alrighty, next up I want to demonstrate how to deploy our GraphQL API with Hot Chocolate via Docker. So ultimately what I want to do is build a Docker image for our application and then run that Docker image in a container in the cloud. And I will preface by saying that if you're following along, you are gonna need Docker desktop installed on your computer. You're gonna need a Docker Hub account as well as an Azure account. So what are we waiting for? Let's hop right into this. So here in our solution, we got our GraphQL API over here. And the first thing I wanna do is build an image for our application. So we're gonna need a Docker file that describes the image that we wanna create. And that's quite easy to get a Docker file in Visual Studio. So if we right click on our project and go down to add, and then we just wanna add Docker support. And I'm gonna target Linux because it's kind of a pain to get Windows containers set up locally. So I'm gonna move on with that. And then here we go, we got our Docker file. So if you're following along and you're not using Visual Studio, you probably weren't able to just get this generated. So I'll leave a link in the description to a website that has templates for ASP.NET Docker files. And then as well, you can check out the source control, which I'll have linked below. So you can just copy what I have, but I will walk through this real quick. So we're just starting from this base ASP.NET.NET 5 Docker container. I am still on .NET 5. So if you're on .NET 6, you'll have to adjust this for .NET 6. And then we expose some ports so that we can actually access our application from the outside world. And then we copy in our CS project file and then do a .NET restore to install packages. And then we copy in the rest of our application, then do a .NET build. After building, we publish, and then we copy the publish result to our app work directory and then run .NET to start our application. So this Docker file will certainly satisfy our use case. The only issue that we have is right here, and that's that we're copying all of our files into the image. And that's an issue in our case because we have this Firebase config.json that contains sensitive information. So what we wanna do is we'll have to add this to a Docker ignore file. And instead of creating one, Visual Studio actually generated one, except it's not in our project, it's a level up. So if I switch over to folder view and then go into where our solution is, it put the Docker ignore next to our solution, but I actually just want this next to my Docker files. Let's move that down. And here we go, we got that here now. And let's open up the Docker ignore and let's add our firebase-config.json. So it should be good there. So now that we're ignoring the Firebase config.json, that's gonna be an issue for us because we actually need that to initialize this Google credential. And if that file doesn't exist, this will throw an error. So just to verify that we are ignoring this sensitive file, let's rebuild our Docker image and let's run our app. And we should hit an exception here. So if I right click this Docker file and click build Docker image, that will start building it down here. And I'm not sure if any of you will get this, but I keep getting this annoying error where it says Docker is not installed or is not in the current path. And I'm not sure what all that is about, but if I go ahead and copy this command that Visual Studio is running, so just copy all of that, copy, and then paste it into a terminal. So I just got a new command prompt and I paste it in there and then run this. And there we go, it was successful from the terminal. So I guess it's just some weird Visual Studio bug. The most important part is that we have our image built. So let's run this. We can do a Docker container run and then just paste this tag name. So GraphQL demo API colon latest. So let's run this and all righty, we get path cannot be null. We got an argument null exception. And where is that? It's where we try to create the Google credentials. So that means that we are successfully ignoring this file because it couldn't find it. So what is the alternative? Well, what we can do is instead of loading the credential from a file, we can load it from JSON. So we can just pass in a JSON string that has the contents of our Firebase config.json. And then we won't need that file and we can store the Firebase config contents in our app settings.production.json or environment variables. So that is what I'm gonna do so that we won't need this file anymore. I'm gonna change this to from JSON and I'll change our key name to just Firebase config. So now I wanna add an app settings.production.json. So let's add a new item. Actually, I can just copy the development. So let me copy that and rename it to app settings.production json and then inside here i'll just get rid of everything and add a key for the firebase config and then for this value what i'm going to do is take the contents of this firebase config.json 
So let me select all of that. And I have that in my clipboard. And then I'm gonna come over to this JSON, the string converter tool. I'll leave a link to this in the description, but here we go. I will paste in the JSON from my Firebase config.json and then press convert and copy the output. And then I'm gonna paste that as the Firebase config value in my app settings.production.json. So let me paste that. And then just for testing real quick, I'm gonna copy this Firebase config value into my app settings.development.json too. So let me paste that. And now if we run the app, it should load this value and we should be able to successfully create our Google credential. So let me put a breakpoint here and let's try this out. So let's continue and our app successfully starts. So now we are no longer reliant on our Firebase config.json and we can successfully leave that out of our Docker image. Although I think it would be useful to set up something here where we use the Firebase config file for local development and then use the Firebase config actual string JSON for production environments. But for now, we'll just stick to the JSON string and I'll just make sure I don't check that into source control. So let me remove that from app settings.development.json. So now let me head back into my Docker ignore file. So switch over to folder view and go to Docker ignore. And I want to ignore app settings.production.json since that now has the secret Firebase config value. And then I also want to git ignore this file as well. So there we go. Now we're no longer going to have that in source control or in our Docker image. And then when we're running this in production in the cloud, our configuration will just load this value from an environment variable. So now back in the command prompt, let's build our Docker image and actually publish it. So I want to build this, but I want to tag it something different. So let me head back over here and change what we tag it as. And I want to change this to my Docker username slash the name of my Docker image. So I'm going to call mine singleton Sean because that's my Docker username and then slash GraphQL demo API. So let's create that. And here we go. We tagged it singleton Sean slash GraphQL demo API. That's what we wanted. Now I want to do a Docker login and I just logged out to show how this works. So Docker login and then put in my username. So I am singleton Sean and then I'll put in my password and successfully log in. There we go. And now I want to push up the image that we just built. So to do that, we do a Docker push and then simply the name of our tagged image. So that's singleton Sean slash GraphQL demo API. So let's push that up. And here we go. looks like we're rolling. All right. So our image was successfully pushed. So if I move over to Docker Hub, let me bring that up and then go to repositories. Here we go. We have our GraphQL demo API image pushed to our Docker Hub repository. So now we just want to use that image in Azure. So I'm going to move over to Azure now and let's head into Azure app service. So let's go to all services and let's go to app services and then let's create an app service. So I'm going to throw this into my GraphQL demo resource group. I'll name my app GraphQL demo API. And then I'm going to host this, of course, in a Docker container. So let's go with Linux operating system because that's what I use for Docker locally. And then we should be good here. Let me change my plan. So I'm just going to go with the free plan for now. So let's select that and then let's move on to configure Docker. So we're just going to have a single container, our image source. We published our image to Docker Hub. You could also use Azure Container Registry. I've used that before. It's pretty nice, but we chose Docker Hub. Our image is public and then our image name is singleton Sean slash GraphQL demo API, I think. So, yep, that's it. And that should be all we need there. We'll go ahead and enable application insights. There we go. And then finally, let's go ahead and create this. All right, there we go. Deployment done. Let's go to Azure App Service and we can try and hit this. I assume our application failed to start because we haven't set our Firebase value or a connection string to our database. I think our app is still spinning up too. Let's go ahead and wait for this. Or actually in the meantime, let's go ahead and add our configuration values. So let's add our Firebase config and we can grab that from our app settings.production.json. So let me copy all of this. So there we go, got the Firebase config and then we need a connection string. So we are hitting a SQL server. I actually have an Azure SQL server that will grab the connection string for. But our connection string name that we load in our startup.cs is default. 
And then the value, let me head into my SQL database. So if we go into this GraphQL, I guess I named this wrong, but this is supposed to be GraphQL demo DB. And I can grab the connection string right here, copy that, and then move that into the value for our connection string. And then I'll just add my password here and then submit that. So we should be good with our configuration values. Let me save this. And I think that'll automatically restart our web app. Not entirely sure. Maybe we'll just do it manually. So let me go ahead and restart. Let's do it. And if we go back to our app, so this did fail to start. So let's refresh and maybe this time it'll work since we have our config values. All right, so our app failed to start again. And what I'm trying now is changing this Firebase config value to not be the stringified JSON and just be the actual overall JSON. So let's see if this works. I think we'll have to restart. And yes, there we go. Our app successfully booted up and we've hit the banana cake pop playground. So all should be good. We can try hitting a query. So let me hit my GraphQL server. I'm going to query for courses. Let's just dig into nodes and grab course ID. I don't think I have any courses in this database. I actually wiped the old database from my last video where I did the initial deployment. So this is a fresh database. I don't think we have anything, but there we go. At least the query succeeds. We get a 200. So all is good. And that's another thing I want to bring up. So this database I already had. So if you want to see how I created that database, go ahead and check out my previous video where we deployed to Azure App Service without Docker. But this time we successfully deployed with Docker. We hit some Roblox, but we got everything working. So just to summarize, we wrote this Docker file. Well, we didn't really write it. We told Visual Studio to generate this Docker file so we could build a Docker image. And then we had to make some changes that we didn't copy in our Firebase config, which has sensitive data into our Docker image because we don't want that to be shared with the world. But then after we accounted for those changes, we built our final Docker image, pushed that up to Docker Hub. So we got our image here in Docker Hub, all good. And if I refresh, we'll actually see we have some downloads now and that's by Azure. And that's from all those times that we restarted the app. So it had to download it each time. So that being said, after we pushed this image to Docker Hub, we used it in Azure to create an Azure app service. Then our app failed to start a bunch of times. And that was because we didn't have our configuration values. So I had to add this Firebase config, which contains those Firebase config.json values. And then we needed our connection string too which points to our Azure SQL database. And finally, we were able to hit banana cake pop and execute a query. So hopefully you can get your own GraphQL application running with Docker so that you can deploy it to Azure or really any cloud service that supports Docker. Finally, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.